Medieval for the PlayStation 4 is not just a game. It's an experience. Now, that might sound like hyperbole to you, and it is. But you can't spell hyperbole without hype. And in this video, I'm going to explain why you should be hyped for the Medieval Remake. As someone who played the original Medieval religiously, 2019's Medieval delivers exactly what I wanted. Just as Studio Cambridge's original title captivated 8-year-old me all those years ago, Other Ocean Emeryville's interpretation of the game has sucked me into the world of Galamir, itching to vanquish Zarek and earn my rightful place in the Hall of Heroes. The impeccable technical work the studio has put into retaining the original Medieval's feel, whilst drastically updating everything around it, is nothing short of astonishing. The HD visual upgrade the game has seen isn't simply that of throwing the original models into a modern lighting engine and cleaning up the textures. Other Ocean, Emeryville, and Secret Six have done a phenomenal job bringing the world of Galamir to life. The flat, polygonal geometry of 1998 has been upgraded into a modern 4K kingdom, rebuilt from the grave up with brand new models, lighting, and animations. Galamir and its inhabitants have been rendered beautifully, melding a world of German expressionist environments and Burton-esque character designs into a miniature diorama resembling that of stop-motion movies such as Cubo. And yet, it's all still very faithful. Each character looks exactly as you remember them, just iterated upon even further to bring them up to modern visual standards. Even the enemies, which would have been quite easy to completely redesign, are close facsimiles of their original counterparts. Considering some of the redesigns we've seen in recent years, this attention to detail is much appreciated. The increase in graphical fidelity also brings us more impactful set pieces. The entrance hall now truly feels as if you're standing right in the foyer of Zarek's lair, due in no small part to the level being one-to-one -one with the area we see in the intro. Additionally, the original FMV cutscenes have now been recreated in-engine, allowing fully seamless transitions into their respective levels. All of this serves to make the world of Galamir feel like a living, breathing place in a way that the PS1 simply wasn't capable of delivering. In contrast to the Crash and Spyro trilogies, which ran at 30 frames per second with interpolated motion blur, Medieval instead elects to render at 60 frames per second. Admittedly, the frame rate does buckle in some areas, scarecrow fields in the sleeping village are examples of very sore spots, but when the game is running at its best, it looks brilliant. Hopefully a day one patch will address these issues, however in the meantime we feel it's worth mentioning that they're there. Those of you who purchased the digital deluxe edition of the game are in for a treat, as the Art of Medieval features a treasure trove of marvellous concept art, as well as interviews with other Ocean team members Nick Broody, Norman Badillo, Justin Rosenthal Kambik and Emily Chen. We won't be sharing any of it here though, so you'll have to get that yourself. Let's talk about the gameplay. It's medieval as you remember it. Sir Dan's controls have been recreated incredibly faithfully, just, well, better. For lack of a more appropriate term, Dan always felt quite slippery in the original, which was very unique and in character, but perhaps a bit too much? We're happy to report, then, that Dan is much tighter to control now. Make no mistake, he's still characteristically slick, but you won't find yourself falling into the abyss at the game's behest nearly as often. Combat is similarly faithful yet upgraded, with Dan's attacks being as nimble as ever. No slowdown here. But now, we are also treated to true strafing and a brand new over-the-shoulder camera function. The Dan Cam, as it's called, can be activated by holding down the R2 button, and brings you a true God of War style experience. It also gives you a pretty great look at the general scenery, so that's neat too. The quick swap function from Medieval 2 has also been brought over which allows you to equip both a primary and secondary weapon that can then be swapped at the press of a button. This was a heavily requested feature, so seeing it in is a nice surprise. The boss battles have been, by and large, totally overhauled. The Pumpkin Serpent, originally the worst boss battle in the game by far, is now a contender for one of the best, featuring a long, multi-phase design in rather stark contrast to the original where he could be beaten in a matter of seconds by striking his roots enough times. According to other Ocean producer Jeff Nakbar, 
Many of the boss additions are based on intended features buried in the original source code that didn't make it as a result of time constraints. Consequently, this is likely where the remake is most divergent from the original, but it's for the better. The bosses have frankly never been more fun. Other Ocean have also brought on series creators Chris Sorrell and Jason Wilson to consult upon the direction of the remake, giving their seal of approval to the new interpretations on display. That's not the end of their involvement either. The game now features a bestiary written by Sorrel himself. As you meet friends and foes across Galamere, the bestiary will fill up with information and portraits. The art is beautiful and the captions are hilarious. Sir Dan's bio calls him the worst for being a philatelist. So it ends up genuinely just being a great addition to the game. Finally, the digital deluxe edition of the game features a brand new motion comic written and illustrated by Sorrel and Wilson. It titled Fate's Arrow, it's loosely based off of their original pitch for Medieval 3 in which Sir Dan revisits Galamir after the events of Medieval 2. I won't spoil anything here, but for longtime fans of the series, this is a goldmine. I'd be remiss in not mentioning the audio. Series composers Bob and Bon have returned once again to reorchestrate the original score, but this time with a twist. The game's music is now dynamic, reacting to the many things Dan comes across in the land of Galamir. This means that every piece is fully interactive, each having multi-layered arrangements that are twice, sometimes thrice as long as what they were originally. One of our favorite examples is in the Hilltop Mausoleum. The level's music starts to somewhat more ambient and somber than the original, but upon giving the sheet music to our friend Mr. Organ, and yes, that's really what he's called, the pipe organ which featured so prominently in the original piece booms to life cacophonously, giving life to the track and stage with a crescendo the original cue could never even come close to matching. Even beyond the interactive aspect, the remade music has had incredible effort put into it. Every track has been fully re-recorded with the Prague Symphony Orchestra, and there are even brand new pieces composed just for this remake. You may recognize some cues that originated in Medieval Resurrection. The bulk of Scarecrow Fields, for instance, is based off of the 2005 recording. But while some fans may balk at the reuse, these pieces have assuredly received the same amount of attention as the brand new recordings featuring several layers of dynamic music not found previously. The digital deluxe edition of the game features lengthy interviews with Bob and Barn on the process of putting the score together, so I highly recommend picking that version of the game up if you'd like to learn more. And that's not all. All of the original game's dialogue has been retained and brought over to the remake in high quality, meaning every character, be it Zarek, the Gargoyles, the Boatman, Jack of the Green, the Pumpkin Witch, sounds exactly as you remember them. Some unused dialogue even makes its way into the remake, although you're gonna have to hear that for yourself. In addition to the original recordings, there are also new voiceovers from Lani Manella, handling all of the game's narration, including reading all of the books Sir Dan comes across, as well as the game's bestiary. Long ago, there lived in the kingdom of Galomir a sorcerer named Zerok. Lastly, we are also treated to fully re-recorded voiceovers for Sir Dan himself by original art director Jason Wilson, once again donning his iconic bucket for maximally authentic mumbling. <laughs> Sadly, the audio is not without its disappointments. Some sounds are not recreated as faithfully as they could have been, like the daring dash or the groans of the zombies or others are just outright missing, such as Dan's skull bonk whenever he hits his head. Whilst most of the sand design is very good, it can often pale in areas such as this, making for a somewhat weaker presentation overall. I'd also like to mention perhaps the most significant piece of new content this remake offers. In the entrance hall, you'll find a chest. Opening this chest frees all the lost souls Zarek has collected during his conquest of Galamir, and it's up to you to put them to rest. How do you do that? Well, every level features its own lost soul for you to find. Once you find them, they tell you their backstory, which also serves as a clue for the level where they need to be put to rest. This usually involves finding a specific area on the level to invoke the soul, then engaging in a unique side quest before the soul is allowed to disappear. It's a brilliantly unique twist on the New Game Plus concept and adds significant longevity to the game without feeling artificial or forced. Hardcore fans of Medieval have a lot to take in here. Remember Mr. Apple, Studio Cambridge's mascot from the original game's credits? Well, he's back, and this time he's in every level. Go find him! If you play the short-lived demo, you can unlock the helmet from the Japanese version of the game, which has the added benefit of making the enemies stronger in the event that you thought the game was too easy. Al Salam is on one of the stained glass windows in the hilltop mausoleum. Yeah, really, he is. 
They've even gone and included the super armor from Medieval 2 in Digital Deluxe Edition. Nah, how about that remake, Sony? Medieval, more so than the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy or the Spyro Reignited Trilogy, which are both excellent releases by the way, truly feels like the game it was based off of. As a longtime fan, one who would have been totally prepared to criticize this game if it didn't deliver, I can wholeheartedly say that this is the absolute best way to experience Medieval. Whereas other remakes have, in my experience, felt compromised in one way or another, Medieval gets it right. This is the full package, and you won't miss out on anything if you decide to play this version of the game without playing the original first. It's that good. I'd like to give a major shout out to PlayStation Europe for providing us with the code for the purposes of this review. You guys are the best. If you enjoyed this review, please feel free to check out our Discord server. It's the largest medieval community on the web, hosting over 400 members at the time of recording, and we'd be more than happy to have you. I'll be dropping the invite link below. Thanks for watching.